Hey, Nadine. How are you? Good. Can you see me and hear me yeah. okay? Can you see me? Yes, I can. Um, right. Your camera is cutting your head off just a little bit. Right. There you go. I'm in my bedroom. All right, cool. Oh, man. It's such a pleasure to see you, Nadine. Um, Nadine, where are you zooming in from? What part of Jamaica? Are you in Jamaica? I am in, <laughs> I'm in Jamaica. I'm in Kingston, Jamaica. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Well, it's such an honor um, to talk to you today. Um, if for some reason our screen were to freeze or heaven forbid we have any, you know, technical difficulties, I don't think it'll happen. Um, but, um, but if it does, um, I'll just call you right away or get, get in touch with you and we'll figure something out. Um, sure, sure. So um, Nadine, um, I hope you don't mind my uh, starting off by saying um, that in addition to being a legendary singer, I know that you're also an academic, a writer, a journalist, a TV personality, a teacher, and just the embodiment of so many things that I respect. Um, and so I just want to, I want to personally thank you before we begin, um, sincerely for taking the time out of what I know is an extremely busy schedule. Um, you know, to, 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 to talk with me and, you know, reason, as we say, for, for reggae vibes. Thank you so much cool. for doing that. Thanks. Thank you for having me. And thanks for saying all those things. I was like, really? But it's true. They all true. <laughs> they all, they all true. And yeah, please after. don't forget that the only one thing you forgot dancer and choreographer. Dancer and choreographer. I'm sorry. That too. Um, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and performing arts director. I right, could, right, right, could, right. I could say that too. Now, um, um, one thing I have to note up front, you know, a disclaimer kind of of sorts, and I find myself having to make this kind of a disclaimer when I interview somebody like yourself who's had over 40 plus years, you know, mm -hmm. in the, you know, of a professional career. And there's just no way that I can cover all <clears throat> of the hit tunes and the milestones that you've had, though mm -hmm. I'm going to certainly try my best to cover a lot of them today. Um, it's my hope that you and I will stay in touch and that if there's anything that I missed today, maybe we'll patch it up, you know, at some future time. Sure, sure, definitely, definitely. Now, um, I think that most people, Nadine, would assume, especially knowing me, that I'd want to begin today's interview by immediately asking you and focusing questions on, you know, your the start of your career when you were a child star in Jamaica and you were signed to Bob Marley's Tough Gong label. And that is, of course, a very important aspect of your career. And I plan to ask you certainly a few questions about that. But I would prefer to begin. And frankly, I believe that Bob Marley, if he were alive today, would want me. He would prefer that I begin instead to ask you about your beautiful, gorgeous new single, Queen, um, which is right now just uh, so hot. Um, and um, the, 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 I read in the Gleaner that you said, uh, quote, um, the song is about women who have gone through the ringer to be successful. Um, and I just, I really, dig the the message um you know i think many people will hopefully especially when they hear this interview or watch this interview go and listen to the song immediately you know and absorb you know the message and i think you know of course women will love the song but men too will when they absorb the kind of message of resilience and mm -hmm. pride in oneself you know in the face of people putting you down um and I wanted to ask, start off by asking you, you know, how much of the uh, inspiration for this song, which I know that, you know, you, you very much wrote and I think very involved in the production of everything about this song. Everything, everything. Everything. And so how much of it, the inspiration for this song came from struggles of other women that you see around you and that you know about and how much of it came from reflecting upon your own struggles and adversity as an artist? I think both, both. Um, Marcia asked me, you know, we're supposed to record a song together, Marcia Griffiths. Yeah. So she asked me to write a song and I wrote Queen 
But Queen, when I, when I started singing it to her, I started it in Jamaica and finished it in New York. When yeah. I had an idea, she immediately resonated with it. But I was speaking about myself too. And yeah. then, you know, like with the song, everything, it's, it's autobiographical. Yeah. But it's also to me captures the essence of what people and I'm glad you mentioned that men also can listen sure. to the gist of the story. I know that it's it might be it might be about queens and it seemed gender specific. But as you said, the resilience and the power in it, the ability to rise from the ashes of life and just like find something inside to move forward when there people are telling you no and it's over and the, the negative stuff and you know I was speaking to somebody today and I was like there's a line when I said when she cried in a midnight hour to see if she can find any more power and I always think about women in Jamaica who are single mothers living yeah. in the inner city and you hear these beautiful stories of these women go and sell wares and sometimes not necessarily I think I was hearing some interview with Shelly and Fraser mother and she was saying how back in the days when nothing was selling and, you know, she had to go back to her daughter, to her children, and just like wondering what you're going to do, you know, for put food on the table because today was not a good day, you know. And you hear these stories about just women in the world. And, you know, I just, I think the song tried to condense everything, every struggle, and just yeah. made it into a song. And it, it's, it's not gender specific and it's not class specific because you look at it and you have women who work in corporate, the corporate world in, in, in France and work hard and just cannot break that glass ceiling because of, so yeah, good. you know, in America and you hear all these story about, you know, about the struggles, just struggling, but just finding that power to move on, persevere, you know. Nadine, I wanted to ask, I saw when I was watching the, the, the video that it was um, the official video, which I have a few questions about, was released by the, the song was released by Oyen Records. And Oyen, it, Oyen, honey, Oyen. that's my record. Honey, oh. it's honey in Yoruba. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. Um, and um, is being distributed, the song is being distributed by VPAL or VP Records, true? VPAL, VPAL, yes. VPAL. Mm -hmm. And um, the same general uh, Gleaner, the, the same Gleaner article that I read, it, it was in, released in March, published in March, it noted that Queen was recorded at Donovan Germain's Penthouse Records um, and includes great musicians on the track like Dean Frazier on sax. Um, and that article noted that, in fact, that Frazier was involved, Dean Frazier was involved in getting uh, VP on board with the song. Is that, is that accurate? That is accurate. Yeah. Um, he was, he, I think he, I look at him and he looked proud because Dean know me from I'm a little girl. He know that 11 year old girl. I, I grew up with Dean. Dean is like my bigger brother. Wow. That's all. And we're very, very close throughout the years. Dean is close to a lot of people because that's the kind of personality he is. He's a given um extremely generous soul so when i did it i was sitting on the song because i'm like what am i gonna do you know you feel good after you know you're like oh and you tell all of the beautiful wonderful narratives oh the song was organic and it was it was authentic <laughs> so you're like what next you know it's like and then, you know even the guy who makes it like what are you doing with the song i remember greg who mixed it said, what are you doing with the song it's like i don't know and I called Dean, I was like, Dean, I didn't even know what to do. He's like, okay, I'm going to go to Chris because this song is a very good song. Yeah. And I'm going to tell him about this song. So he, how did he, you, oh, if you don't mind my asking, how did you, did you, so did you, did you, you create the song and then you, 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 you know, with Dean and then, and then he, he thought about it and then he thought about how he's going to approach VP with it. I asked him, I said, Dean, because it, it, everybody, when this session was finished, they were all impressed because they're musicians, right? And it's a very musical song. And I think more than anything else, he was proud of me because I'm his little sister. And it's the first time I was stepping out as a producer and an arranger. Wow. So I guess he had that pride, you know? Wow. And um, I just never knew what to do with the song. I was like, what's the next step? Okay. And I went to him and he's like, okay, I'll, 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 make, I'll, I'll give Chris a shout out and a heads up. So he did that and I called Chris. And he said, send the song over. And when I sent it over, I was like, I really like it. VPAL, he was like, you know, you know, talk to VPAL and see what you can do with the distribution. And he's like, you need a video. 
<laughs> and that, that video, that video is fantastic, Nadine. Um, the video, everyone should go immediately pull it up. It's watch it on YouTube. It's gorgeous. And you look, I hope you don't mind absolutely, I hope you don't mind my saying absolutely stunning in Thank the you. video. They 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 outfitted you in yeah. these beautiful gowns. Reality, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, everyone is a queen, and then at yeah. the end, you're sitting in a throne. I mean. The, the 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 video is beautiful and i wanted to ask you you know you is filmed it looks like you're on a hill in a beautiful house and i wasn't for sure it looked like you're looking overlooking a lush valley was this video filmed in jamaica or it was some... filmed in jamaica the whole idea was like i was looking down on my kingdom whoa wow <laughs> Like the queen walks down and she's, I mean, it's some of the, if you saw some of the back, the back yeah. thing the video, it's like the high heels and me coming down those staircase. I was toppling over and they had to be holding me like they get around three steps that when I look at it, I was like, I look really confident, you know, coming down. But I think the, they got the three steps that I look up because the rest of the time I was like toppling over <laughs> <laughs> in that gown with so much material, you know? Now you so, look like the queen coming down and what, oh, yeah. what, is, what is the, what, so what part of Jamaica are we looking at? That was Stony Hill, Jamaica. Nice. Stony Hill. Nice. So we went up into the hills so they could get, they could capture me looking down on my kingdom. I was like, I wish, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, 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 thing. now, you know, I, certainly I think we'll probably circle back to queen, um, especially because I think that a lot of the, the themes of the, to show up in Queen, the song, which is a very deep song, um, may come back uh, in this in this interview even. But um, for now, the last thing I wanted to ask about it um, in the video uh, in which you see it, you see a young girl. She's studying, and eventually she's growing up, and she's graduating. Um, and there's also a sweet cameo by your mom, Beverly um, Sutherland. And then we see you singing um, with some large frame photos of. Ms. Pat Chin, um, there's the former Jamaican PM, Portia Simpson Miller, um, Rita Marley, um, Olivia Babsy Grange, the Minister of Sports, Culture and Entertainment um, for the JLP, she's also pictured. Um, why did you choose these particular women, um, these images to be part of that video? Okay, so Mrs. Rita Marley was very instrumental in me as a child, instrumental in my career. And she looked out for me so much. Um, I was a country girl in Above Rocks. The first kind of official voice training that I got, like uptone. Yeah. You know, was she was she was putting Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers in voice lesson, and she's like, Nadine, go. So she that's for me was a, a whole life changing stuff. She never ever excluded me while we were growing up, and she looked out for me. Wow. She had young girls too. So she understood being a mother and a young lady being in the music industry and all of that. So I cannot forget her kindness towards me. And, you know, people have different narratives. That is what I saw. And yeah. I'm very, very thankful. Mrs. Wiley was always good and kind to me. And I've seen her, you know, a lot of people speak a lot of things, but I've seen her be a manager to her children. I've seen her like with the first year when Bob transitioned the first concert yeah. ever at Nine Mile, I sang on it and it was her trying to keep the legacy of Bob alive. So for I've seen her in, a, in, in how I see her. Oh, other people see her, I can't really speak on that. And what she has done with her life, what she has done with her children's life, what she has, you know, whatever Mrs. Wiley is, she to me deserved to be in that in me paying homage to her. Um, Mrs. Patchen, the P in VP, is that like a China lady? You know, you look at her, where she's coming from, from Randy's Records in Jamaica and building the empire that VP is now this um, big record company in the States yeah. that basically, you know, is, is, is just and the one that people... Giant. And giant. the P in it is this like a China woman called Miss Pat. Yeah. And Miss Pat built it brick by brick. When her husband was sick, she and Chris and Randy built, and she's at the helm. So in terms of honoring her as a queen, and I'm sure some of the stories that I mentioned in my song, she experienced it just like Mrs. Marley. When yeah. we read Miss Pat's book, 
the tears you cried in the midnight hour to see if you can find any more power. I read in her book and she said that <laughs> when she left Jamaica as an immigrant, and also I am an immigrant, I am Caribbean American, I'm a US citizen and a Jamaican citizen. She said because she was so afraid and don't know what the future going to bring, she pack up food from Jamaica. <laughs> So that thing them can't food for a couple of months. I mean, usually it's the reverse, but you know, starting a new life over. Yeah. See, look at that. Mrs. Portia Simpson Miller and Mrs. Babs the Grinch, your stories are the same. And I was extremely deliberate that I chose those two these two, two one from two different parties. Wow. Um, it's problematic for some people. It depends on what political divide that you're on, but I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at these women came from the ghettos, the inner cities of Jamaica. And knowing classism in Jamaica, nothing supposed to go on for them. They well, never res- did supposed to reach anywhere in a damn life. So much respect for putting, you know, um, the way people live their lives and and their 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 character before a party. You know exactly, and, and that, was- that is what I'm looking for. I said, all right, the labor right them cancel me of Babsy, and the socialist them cancel me of Portia. But irrespective of all of that is the gist of the story that I looked at. Their life. Those are ghetto girls. Wow. In a city woman. And, and I said, now, I'm from inner city only. They're my woman. And now, and now, the inner city. And now, and now they're running things. Right. Mrs. Portia right. went through a lot of stuff. She went right. through classism, sexism, everything. And she went to the helm of the PNP as the prime minister. You have to respect. You have to give. You have, have to, to respect, respect that respect. in terms of where they are coming from. You look at Miss Barbara Grange too. She come from Tivoli Gardens, worked her way as a hard worker, and reached this level in society, in Jamaican society. So, what, and I'm sure when they when you listen to Queen, some put you aside to, to say you get give, give up and die. Those women have been knocked down a lot in their journey to where they're. I was curious yeah. if you knew. I heard to this just today. Whether I, I heard today that Babsy Grange was at one point involved as a booking agent, was involved actually in the in the music industry at one point. It was. She was a manager. She worked with Spec Shang. She worked with um, specialists for a while. Yeah. During the Bounty days and the Shabba days, she was working. So she I worked. Know, I, didn't also, know this. I think the first um, cadre of. Uh, Jamaican performers that came to America. I think there was some World Expo thing. She went as a dancer. Mr. Siaga, I think, organized it back in wow. the day. I don't, think so any, they, I don't think many people know that. A lot of people don't know a lot of stuff, so they shut up their mouth, but I know a lot of stuff, uh-huh. and I know why I put these women in the, the, these videos, in my uh-huh. video. Um, uh-huh. go on, anybody with them political belief, or uno, me not, I'm not looking for no hands out or anybody. None of those women who I put in my video, I think they're going to do anything for me. I'm a self-made woman. You yeah, know, respect, so respect. none of them, you know, one, nothing from none of them, them uh, except respect, because I have of, a lot of kind respect. of kind of related to that, Nadine, kind of related to that. You've spoken out in the press about both age and, you know, sex discrimination in the music business. And I would note also that people should go look. You wrote a very compelling column uh, just a year ago in the Jamaican Observer called Ageism. And, uh, and the entertainment industry, which I thought was a very compelling and very well-written article that Thank people you. Should, should go read immediately. Um, and um, my thought was reading the article um, is, you know, you are one of, I hope you'll permit me to say, um, one of the most well-known, recognized, and respected Jamaican singers in the world with mm-hmm. many hit songs, which I'm going to ask you about. And a queen, a queen, a queen in this industry by any objective measure. Do you still feel, do you still feel, Nadine, that ageism and sexism are even today holding you back despite this, what I would argue is a status? You know, it's like some of my songs, I think in terms of me as a songwriter, I think it got lost in, in, in the thing. I was listening to some of my songs, even with Queen. And I was listening to Chatty Chatty, In I'm a Blood, Waganis. And I'm like, I, I don't think people really rate me as a songwriter. And, you know, some of the stuff also, like, in terms of my songs being played. Yeah. 
I never really fit the stereotype of staying in one lane of being, you know, they saw me in action and they saw fun and all that. I am, and I am fun. We need to be perform on stage. I'm a bag of fun. But, but that's, also, versi- that's, can- versi- that's versatility. Exactly. But sometimes they don't want to look at versatility because their minds are so socialized and funneled in seeing a one image of a woman in Wow. Jamaica and sometimes wow. I in Jamaica music and sometimes either you're a conscious queen or a sexy mama or whatever and I'm like well I am both and I feel comfortable in in that and and nobody's gonna change me you like me you like me you're my tribe will come to me you know I'm not I'm not I'm like at this age on stage I cannot even solicit any solicit you know I'm like you like me I'm right. back on stage I'm performing I'm doing my stuff if you right. think my face is too old for you Go find a younger face. <laughs> it must be, that'd be crazy. But when I was preparing for this interview and spending a lot of time, Nadine, listening to your catalog, one thing that really stood out and impressed me is how you've, you've consistently used adversity that you face, um, dealing with the ugly underbelly of the music business. And you've actually channeled that into these flaming hot, flaming hot creative tunes. Um, you know, I mean, I don't want to hide the ball. I'm thinking of, of course, about your your massive dance hall hits, you know, chatty, chatty. I could I could watch it all day long and 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 karma. And if you if you look at chatty, chatty, karma, and even I'd say your most recent song now, Queen, um, it seems like some of the best writing, some of your best writing is really born from when you have a personal torment of sorts in the music industry or entertainment business that's that's caused you that yeah pain. definitely i've used my pain to 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 create art um <clears throat> karma is one yeah. sometimes i feel so helpless in life sometimes i do feel helpless some of the mal- mal- even now some of the malice and the underhanded thing that you know happen in the music industry and you're like if I, you know, go with the level of the level of their actions towards me, and if I go with that same intes- intensity, I kill, mega kill him, I murder, mega murder. I know, Nadine, I know. You're, trying to, you're I know. trying to stop my life, but you know, you just like in, in the universe. Sometimes you just like because I've seen it. I've seen people. I've seen karma really bones back on people. Boom! Bah. I love that song. Say, I think it's a rude girl. Boom! Bang! <laughs> when the pendulum sway. <laughs> Rock, 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 rock. Right, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Yeah, yeah. And it's such. A, I love that song so much, Karma. I do too, and you know, I know the the the, the from just from 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 reading a little bit the research about about why you wrote Karma. But maybe if you don't mind, my asking you to just describe the circumstances behind. The, the, no, remind the me, remind me, because my mind is so far from, remind me what, what I said, remind me what I said. I recall that it had something to do with the fact, um, and I don't know that everyone knows about this show, so, you know, maybe you can correct me. I'm not sure I know all, all as much as I should, but it's, is there, Miss Sutherland was on a show um, <laughs> that was called, it was called Rising Stars, and D- Digicel is the one who, uh, you know, promotes and produces that show. Digicel <laughs> is a huge, huge Jamaican cell phone company. And they, and you were a judge. I believe it's a show that's kind of like American Idol. Yes, it and, was. Yeah, where, where, and you have three judges and you judge and you were on that show for several years. And that show has led to successful careers of a number of very, you know, emerging stars in Jamaica. And you were on that show for several years. And my understanding is that they, one year out of the blue, ungracefully and discourteous, discourteously ah. dismissed, dismissed all the judges. Yes, and, they did. And this, and, and, and you weren't having it. And you wrote the song Karma, I think, in somewhat of a response to these people in, that is that that is true that is true that is true they really really was very very disrespectful yeah. karma was written for that but also at the same time i think i was going through um was it somebody who disrespected me in a relationship and was wow. being very dishonorable also dishonoring Ooh. to me and i'm like goodbye as wow. I to me, my life, I really don't need a middle finger up till a boy, boy, middle fingers up. Oh, man. So, I... was a dual sword thing. 
I dressed oh, up the digital rights and star because I was extremely upset in how they did it. It was very, very underhanded. Um, yeah. I never publicly came out and bashed them, but I wrote that. that. So there were several issues that I think that I needed to channel my anger into a yeah. song and karma came out. Well, it's it's a it was a it was a cutting edge great song when it came out. It's a fabulous song today. Incidentally, I was listening to the tune again right before we began speaking today, and you know there is an incredible saxophone solo at the end. Of I know, the right? It's dynamite. I know. Is, is that I love it? a sax solo in that song too. I'm glad you heard it. Stana, Stana. Oh, it is so bad. I'm sure. Who's it's the mean. Who's the saxophone player? I don't know. I think it's Dean. Is it Dean Fraser? I, I, I think sure. it is because it is such a kick butt sax. So wow. I love it. Right now. May I tell That's you, my so it is so awesome. And people will go listen to that song now. Um, just after a few a few years after Karma rose to the top of the charts, um, you released the other hit that I mentioned, Chatty Chatty. Um, that was again born from negative music industry gossip about you. True. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the official video for Chatty Chatty, which is, again, is available on YouTube. I believe it came out in 2016, I believe. is so No, I wrote it in, it was written and recorded in 2016. They contacted me. Let me try to get a chronological um, yeah. history for it. I was, I, I, I was at the University of the West Indies. I remember when I voiced Chatty Chatty, because Chatty Chatty, um, was released years after it was voice. Um, was it 20, when was 1940? Oh, 2019, they came to me and they're like, we're gonna release Chachi Chachi. I was like, you are kidding me because I forgot about it. Yeah. It was like in the stratosphere of life because I'm like, I don't know how you could have forgotten because this, the song is awesome. It's oh an awesome God. song. So yeah. like, you know, there, there, it was leading into my 40th anniversary for 2020. And that's why I'm so thankful that Chatty Chatty was released. Uh, Chatty Chatty was released twice. There was a soft release and then there was a big release. Because I remember when it, it was February and it started to play. And oh my God. The, 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 and the, vid ah. the, video, the video is so is so hot. It could cause to anyone who watches it, I would just put a warning out. It could cause you to have a meltdown. But the song, <laughs> the, the, the song Chatty Chatty, I mean, this could be um, the best song on the subject of gossipers and backbiters that I, I've ever heard. The lyrics are so vicious. And just for the record, um, you sing verses like, you know, quote, were you emotionally abused, feeling lost <laughs> and misused? And then you say, look how you're getting fame all in bad name. And then there's the great refrain, of course, you know, chatty, chatty mouth. It feels pretty, but you so. It feels pretty, but you so ugly. I, your, I just your face pretty, but your you're face. So ugly. Your face pretty, but you're so ugly. Which yeah. Which I just, I just love it. Um, can you, um, can you discuss at all the circumstances that gave rise to the song a bit? I mean, what was going on, Nadine? That what, was, is, what has gone on in my life? There was this big ugly, and it's, I guess it still exists. People say it don't exist anymore, and, and some people say I take it too serious. So I, I did. It was rumored that I was on crack, and I think I was on drugs. I was this big drug taker, which never in my life. And wow. I think it has impaired, well, I think I don't fit the, the narrative of what reggae and female singers should be. I had my father around me. Nobody really knew a lot of stuff about me because there's not a lot to know. I'm born, <laughs> really. Like, I'm excited when you see me on video and, you know, when I'm performing, they see this thing and I can dance because I'm a trained dancer. But when you see me, I am, I don't think I'm like, la, 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 or out there, you know, I'm, I can be very, very quiet and very observant. And I think in terms, they wanted some dirt on me because there's nothing that they can say that there's no casting code stories about me because it just never existed. So can I think I just, they needed some I, dirt. Can I ask Nadine, were these rumors? Cause I, I tried to understand this. I did see, I, I read somewhere where you had kind of alluded to the fact that people had said you were, you know, this drug addict. Mm -hmm. And now you're you're telling me for the first time I'm hearing that they said you were on cocaine. I'm sorry. It was awful. I'm sorry. It's not even on. It's like it was my life. Well, then, there was can no I ask sign of it. Basically, no sign that anybody could see. And even if they don't see no sign, you walk. They're gonna say, was, "Oh, was this was, was this oh rumor?" God. When you talk about a rumor now, were you, is this something that's circulating that hurt in terms of hurting you 
in the music business i think industry? he did i think he did and that's why sometimes i don't really trust people in the music industry you know because it's, it's, it can be a vile industry right? oh. so i think that what yeah. happened is that i don't know i guess it would be nice to say that about me to, i don't know i don't know what they get off on because you speak vile to karma you reap what you sow you reap what you sow sometimes i wonder if karma right because sometimes some people may believe no in, a, um, in the well. song in the song you you further you you further pointedly sing i'm glad you, you're listening to me because sometimes i get my pato messed up and so no, very, <laughs> i like it no it, i told i try to try to very much you know recognize my limitations as uh you know not a jamaican um but you sing pointedly you are guan so everybody knows it's you uh using your life to cause strife so did you really in real life too, when, you know, I just listening to the lyric, did you also know in real life too, some of the real people who were, you don't have to name them, but did you yeah, also know? Yeah, yeah, it worked for some, it worked for some agenda, some people agenda, um, I know. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad for them because it worked for some women agenda, you know, I don't know if they were in competition with me or what, but wow. hey, it's so, in the past and you know i've worked my way and i'm doing my stuff you know and just like looking at them and just going ah you must be very, very unhappy and to be so obsessed to be to have been and still is so obsessed with me and then you use the music to kind of triumph over over on top of them no, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, love, I love now so far we've talked about queen karma chatty chatty and i want to switch gears if it's okay and talk a bit about some of your internationally famous famous duets internationally known famous duets um that you've had songs that you know that they regularly ring out on different countries but um just before that with the with those three aforementioned songs or in general for songs that you write um and the, the lyrics to because i agree with you i don't think people do give you enough respect as a songwriter and they no, really they, sh they, they should um can you describe a bit nadine your process, and by this I mean, I'm always very curious about this, especially I like to work with words a lot, and so I want to ask you this. Um, is there, a, you know, how I want to know your process a bit in terms of songwriting, and by this, these are the kind of things I'm, I'm kind of curious about. Is there a physical location where you prefer to do your songwriting, and do you need to do certain things to get into a songwriting frame of mind and do you write your lyrics in a journal or where and finally on this at what point will you take lyrics for a new song you've written and share them with someone right okay and who would be and who would be the first person that you share okay. with i usually share them in the studio what happened is that usually if they send me a track yeah and a vibe. Sometimes I track just jump out and a melody. You mumble and fumble and a couple of days and you drive with it and you, you know, it's ah oh, that melody looks so better. That line would that be line more in, impactful and you play around with it until everything just. Sometimes on that, like when I tape and you hear hoover hoover, and then I'm like, oh no, that's not working. Go yeah, do, 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 do. and you hear the process of songwriting. It's a very, I don't know and. It can be very confusing. Organic. It's organic. very organic until you get what you want. Or it's Adi send me a rhythm and I write on it. Or like Queen, the really? melody just came. And Queen was at my house, but it was finished in New York. I think I write well in, like in my bed. I have in my your bed? You write in your bed? Yeah, I write in my bed. On or your phone? On your phone? My, on, your uh, phone? on my phone. Or the inspiration come and I might hum it. And sometimes you don't want to lose. So I've been writing first with a tape, you know, those tape recorder back in the days. Yeah. I used to write with that. Wow. Da, 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 oh, a, di a dictaphone, like a dictaphone. Right. Until yeah. I started writing with wow. my phone right now. So yeah. that's what happened. And then, I, you know, some of the lyrics, I said, this is more potent. And then I listened to it and it's like, ah, it's kind of corny. The rhyme kind of corny. We need something more edgy. And, you know, so nice. that's the writing. Process. That's how it, that's how it comes yeah. together. Um, well, very, very, very cool. Um, and, um, you know, no one could possibly, uh, I mentioned I was gonna, gonna switch to, to, to some of your duets. And, and as you know, it would be impossible for any kind of reggae journalist worth his salt not 
to ask you about your world famous 1994 hit action, your collaboration with Terror Fabulous, that again was produced by Donovan Germain at his penthouse. Uh, 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 it was produced by Dave Kelly. I don't know. I hear a lot of people oh, talk I got about wrong. Donovan Germain. Yeah. Oh. I was, it's one of those things on the internet to see him. And I'm like, I wish I could change some of those weeks. Dave weeks. Kelly. Dave Kelly from Meadows, yes. Wow, okay. Thank you so much for correcting me on that. Um, and I mean, that song has been voted high, high, high on many official sounding, very authoritative lists for, you know, best duet of all time. And I mean, I think a fair swath of the world's population, you could say, including me, yours truly, has at one time or another as a teenager or as an adult jammed to this tune. I mean, I was jamming you to it. That's my wife. Yeah. That song is like this timeless song. When I went right. to New York to be the director of the performing arts and uh, the kids that I was their, their teacher, they're like, they knew action. They didn't believe it. They knew action, a walk. And I mean, I'm, I'm very blessed to have had a song. I don't know. It's a dual thing with action. It's a blessing. But sometimes it's such a curse because sometimes some people just box you in and just want to see True. that. You know, and they don't know your other material. They don't know right. all your other it, it obscures the karma. Other it songs. obscures the chatty chatty. It yeah. obscures the queens, which are great songs. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I I am the girl. That part of me still exists, and it is there. But I'm also a strong songwriter, and have some powerful songs. But you know, I guess sometimes I wonder if the listeners are stuck in 1994. It's and I have moved past that. It's interesting, Nadine, because you say that, and I'm going to certainly get to the point in the interview where I ask you, as, as I mentioned earlier, about your, your child prodigy days. And, mm -hmm. I, and as you just mentioned, you had the double-edged sword, Nadine, of having you know some of these giant hits that everyone knows, and then all these other songs, which they don't know because of the giant, some of the giant hits. The then giant. you have the double-edged sword also. So you have one double-edged sword to sticking you on one side, and then you have another double-edged sword, yeah. to, uh, which is that you were a child prodigy, mm -hmm. and some people maybe just associate that, and you don't, you know, haven't, you know, or or it's or it's you know the dance hall Nadine, and the thing is is that you've been your songs, you you've you you've been all you 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 have not stuck into one, you know, mm -hmm. one part of the. No, music. I don't. That's why you know I'm not a mold person. Yeah. You know, you try to put me in a, a mold. I am not a mold person. Mm -hmm. So I'm Maybe. just like, I live my truth as an artist. And I'm like, the trap who see me and see the totality of who I am will see me. Respect. But I find that people are so socialized to really like think in boxes. Is that you're this or you're that? You know, that's they're true. not socialized to think like somebody who's out of the box. Now, that's true, Nadine. And, and many, many people don't know now that Action was never meant to be this giant hit, that it was actually recorded, correct me if I'm wrong, as a demo. It was supposed, it was supposed to be my demo, one of my demos. And then what happened? <laughs> I came to Jamaica to record. I was, let me tell you the whole story. I went yeah. to London and auditioned for Soul to Soul. Karen Wheeler left Soul to Soul. I got the part. Wow. Um, managers hated each other. I mean, like, <laughs> I can't find an age to, to really, like, this. both of them, this, uh, you know, it's a funny thing. You look at how they hated each other, and they're both dead. Oh, look man. They're both dead. So all of that hate or racial Where is that gone now? Yeah. Where is that gone? Where is that energy? Gone? That energy, that oh, energy wasted, yeah. wasted so energy. A lesson in futility and male machismo. Thank you so and, like, much. For pointing that out. Isn't that, it's a powerful, I'm just it's like a moment. It just came to me a while ago that they're both dead. Um, oh, wow. So I, I got a part and they couldn't get along. So Erskine Thompson was managing me then and he was like, okay, so I want you to just like do some, first it was some R&B that he was like, you know, I don't think that's the direction. Go home and do some dance hall. The first dance hall song, what it, I started working with Jermaine, Wicked and Wild, before it became Wicked Dicky with Bujo Banton. Yeah. Then I have a question about that one towards the yeah. end. Yeah. Then action, and then Dave Kelly decided that he was going to release action as a song in Jamaica. So it was Nadine Sol and Terra Fabulous first. And it done the place, it done the dance hall. And then uh, Terra got really hot with a lot of tunes. Terra had a lot of hit tunes. And 
VP, no, Electra. Yeah. All right. Electra signed Tarot. And they I eventually went, signed. They eventually signed you too, right? They eventually signed me after action. Yeah. When I showed up when the video know, I basically got the choreography and the dancing and everything. Everything you see for action was basically me. You know, it was my idea. It was my creativity. It was me and my dancing. <laughs> well, you I know, when you say, uh, and I, that really makes me want to ask because, um, you know, I, I'm very curious about this. Selected Jerry, he's a friend of mine and he's the host of a very, very popular and respected um, radio reggae, reggae show. And he wanted to me, me to ask, and honestly, especially given that, you know, initially this song was created as a demo, your demo, and given what you're saying right now, I'm very curious too. Um, Selected Jerry wanted me wanted, wanted wanted to know wanted me to ask you this question. He wanted to know, given how massive of a hit that this song is, action, um, and how often you can still hear it played all around the world. Um, did your participation in that one song alone? I love the way he framed this. This is his the way he framed this. Did did your participation in that one song alone? and the royalties from it make you financially comfortable, he, he said, for life. I am not financially comfortable for life from action at all. I didn't write action. And why not? And then, and then why not? And then the question remember would be, that, remember that I didn't write action. I am oh. the songwriter of action. That's okay. the thing. That's why I tell you. Who wrote action will live forever because that song, I'm a performer. So I get the performing royalties when there is a, it is available, yeah. But I'm not the right of action. So okay. the, yeah, the, the, the copyright- You have to separate them, yeah. Right, yeah. people have to separate them. I'm just a performer, which is, is two different kind of- And the performing rights don't pay as well as the songwriting rights. Not at all. Not new, not- be sharing too. Not well. at all. Mm -hmm. Do you feel on the same subject a little bit, do you feel overall in your career that you've been treated fairly nadine no um, as it concerns royalties for the numerous hit songs that you've enjoyed over 40 years mm, it's not only the royalties it's just like a lot of stuff i don't think i've been treated fairly yeah and um yeah but you know can, I look you, at can you can you can you can you speak on some of those things like what are the things um that, i don't that, think i get the sh right now i'm demanding in terms of you know the shows you know, because in terms of my level of hit songs, I'm the thing, you know, you know, I'm just right now, I'm seeing myself differently and I'm like, I won't be taking that. And I think what has given me the confidence is knowing that I have an alternative. I'm a master degree woman. So yeah. at the end of the day, I'm like, listen, you know, and I'm not even a master degree woman. I'm a I stepped out of the music industry and had a successful life outside being the director for the performance. I bought a lot to my job when I when I, I went to challenge and I'm very very proud of what I've done so it has given me another level of confidence going back to school oh I view myself when I stepped out to the, the world you, I stepped out of the Jamaica you said when you went to you said when you went to challenge yeah that's the, the that's the organization that I worked with thank you yeah. right so when I stepped out when I went to America and I realized the enormity of of, of action the enormity that I, you know, anybody said this is a woman that wrote action. It could be white, black, yellow, purple. I mean, those colors don't exist. But I mean, in to terms of people wearing hijab and, you know, they come on the job and, and you know, going places. And you mentioned that and the ears and eyes open up. And I realized that I did that. Yeah. You know, I gained a lot of confidence in terms of myself as an artist, myself as a woman, because I went and I, finance myself through school you know respect. and i'm respect. successful at that a, a different level of my life and not everyone knows but you when you talk about your school you uh, i know this just from from reading about you but that you you know you have your master's um of cultural studies I yes. believe, right um and um from the university of the west indies i think mm -hmm. correct yeah. yeah yeah so um you know, which uh, which uh, I think also then later led to uh, you know the very cultural tune uh, at least was uh, had some inspiration to the uh, into my into my blood. You know, uh, my blood, blood. Yeah. yeah, very very much so. That that yeah. song was totally cult, totally during my break. I was writing my thesis. Yeah, and 
the professor said no good the December and um it was so painful for me. I was like, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> balling, and then I remember just my professor writing me and he said he wanted to work with me. And in you know, my blood just I think at the time when I wrote it, it's there's this a, 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 a young man of African descent was killed in America. One of the yeah. first public yeah. killing. Yeah. And I was so angry. I was so angry. I was so hurt, just like a lot of people in the world. I saw and that I, you, yeah, you talked about the Black Lives Matter in connection yeah. to this song, to writing yeah. this song. Yeah, Black Lives yeah. Matter. And then I was seen in the ghettos of Kingston and understanding the trajectory of inner city living and understand that it came from the long thing of slavery and colonization and everything so, and how peasantry and how it just ended up with we, so, you know. So much respect. Nadine, I don't want to lose the track of this because I was going to ask you still, um, uh -huh. just going back for a minute um, about about financial stuff, because I think it's important, especially for young artists to understand some of this stuff. And I know that when you were a, uh, I believe when you were a child star, I believe at least until you graduated from high school, that your parents helped to manage, you know, your career. But when did you first really learn to manage the business side of the music? And I, I'm talking now about things like you mentioned, performing rights, copyrights, royalties making sure that your music is not you know being that, that you're getting you know compensated for your music you know as much as you can um and i learned that later on but still i learned you know i learned that later on it wasn't like something that in the jamaican sphere all of these things you know happen, happened um or some people knew and just never tell anyone it yeah. happened later on in my life but still um i learned and i think I, I learned pretty well, you know, in terms For of sure. understanding, you know, performance rights, separate from copyright. Did somebody help you with that or did you learn that someplace? Uh, you know, people helped me, you yeah. know, where the performing rights is concerned, everyone who um, leads jam, leads jams now, Jamaica Association of I don't remember what the, it, the acronym means, musicians. So. Oh, I, I'm familiar with it too, actually. Right. I should know too. Right. I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Jams. I actually worked there for three months in terms wow. of putting together the wow, performance rights. They're very involved. They're very involved, that organization, true, in terms of educating musicians in Jamaica. Very much so. Thank very you. much so. And Evan just being just a person who was just so open, so filled with hey, knowledge. His name is he, Evan. Evan, what's his last name? I can't remember Evan's last name. I'll Evan. figure it out. I can Google he's it. He's my very, very good friend. And he's incredible. He's incredibly yeah. knowledgeable. And um, I, I could ask him anything. And although I know performance rights, he made, it just was concretized in my head because having him and just speaking to him. When I published... When I publish the interview, I will find his last name and I'll put it in there. But he works with the Jams. Is that right? He's the CEO of Jams. Very good. I'll find him and I'll, I'll make sure I put it in. Now, hey. um, this may be silly. I mean, I have to also I make sure I because, you know, I, I you know, you get a chance to talk to someone like you can't can't want to make sure you ask some questions. Um, th This may be silly, but when you sing action and then terror follows. OK, and he <laughs> says he says not a bag of mouth. Can you please help an American like myself? Though I think I may know, okay, can you give me a translation of what the patois of not a bag of mouth would translate to? I have a suggestion, but I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, but could you tell me what would maybe be a good American substitute for that and what is being said? Not, not a bag of mouth. It means, okay, it means that your actions should substantiate what your words are saying. Nice. You are speaking too much, but your actions is not say, doing what you're saying. In the, in the United action, we want to see the action. We don't want to talk. You're, it's just pure talk. Your person just talk, 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 but Respect. you're not doing the actions. So, so we have to say, is action, not yeah. a bag of mouth. No right. long talking, no chatty chatty. <laughs> in the United States, I think my I think what I thought is maybe accurate because in the United States we have a saying, all talk and no action. That's it. You got it right there. So okay, now that bag of mouth. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, we figured this out. Let's see what a bag of mouth is like. Okay, the Louis Vuitton one. 
the big old knapsack, just tons of bag of just chat. And you, you run your mouth, mouth. you run your mouth. Run your mouth, so I ain't not do nothing. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Um, now, um, uh, if it's okay, I also, I want to turn to another uh, flaming hot collaboration of yours came out about the same time. Well, you mentioned it. We talked about it. I know you've had a number with him, but Buju Bantan, Wicked Dicky. We have to talk. We have to talk. I, I mentioned to you. That's an incredible the, song. I mentioned to you before the interview. I mean, wow! It's so the track is so addictive. Um, there's a reason why it reached number one on the Jamaican charts um, because the song is fire. And one thing about action, and I want to. I wonder if what you thought about this. But one thing about action and Wiki Dicky, which I find so interesting, is. It seems like for these songs that explode, that, you know, if I was a producer and I was thinking about, you know, who I want to get for a song, right? It seems like whenever you have a deep male, coarse, ragamuffin, raspy kind of voice, and you need to get a good compliment to that, you're going to 100% every single time it's going to be Nadine Sutherland. Because I think, I think I think that at that time it really was like that. I mean, yeah. in terms of thinking that I was so R and B and my voice was so melodious, it really when you juxtapose it with a tarot and you juxtapose it with a bujo, it's just so, so, just like incredible. In, in the United the, States, the, the, as I said, the difference complement my sweetness and their raspberry. That's <laughs> right. And in the United States, in the United States, it's absolutely true, Nadine. And in the United States. I would compare it to uh, when you have a Mary J. Blige or a Lauren Hill, you know, paired up with like a Method Man or yeah. uh, somebody from, you know, or, you know, or, or you know, or Nas. Um, and so I just think that, um, you know, these songs, when, you, when, when you're a producer um, and you're thinking about the way that you, you match up the, the tone and the lyrics, but, you know, that's what I also wanted to mention is that, it's really not just the 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 the, the tone and the uh, and the melody that complements so well. It's kind of also the lyrics that you sing in both the songs, "Action" and "Wicked Dicky." If you look at what's that, being... "Wicked Dicky" is two different songs. There's "Wicked and Wild" and yeah. "Wicked Dicky." They are two distinct songs. I... What happened is that they put them together. I never even knew that we had a duet. I went to London. I found out that Bujo Banton and I had a duet. Wow. I was funniest story because i went into this record store and we had record stores yeah and i went in i don't know where and the man complimented me on my number one song and i'm with buja banton and i'm tristan this was like i don't i don't have a song <laughs> you with didn't Bujibantan. know no i didn't oh, and the man wow. is like i have a song with buja i'm saying i have no song with buja boss because they just overlaid they just overlaid the exactly they just morphed the songs together it was very done it done very good if you look at it but if you really know wicked and wild the the rhythm you yep. know that there is a song called Dicky Dicky by Bridget Branton and Wicked and, and Wild, and yeah. they just put those songs together. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, though, it's still the same point, though, is that if you go back and look at the lyrics, though, it's not just the combination of chorus um, and, and melody versus in the tone. It's also the lyrics, because if you look at what Buju is saying, you look at what Karen I know, is right? Saying, it really is it your, it's brilliantly done. Brilliantly your, done. Your lyrics are... Your <laughs> brilliant lyrics, done. It really is brilliantly done. Your lyrics are very sweet um, and soulful compared to theirs. Now, um, I have jumped around quite a bit in my questions concerning your career, and um, and thank you for indulging me. Um, I want to go uh, to to now go back to the historic, one of a kind, auspicious beginning of your career, which I, I mentioned there would be no way I, I could just not ask you about. Um, and anyone who's taken a serious look at your journey knows that you propelled the fame, as you mentioned, we may have mentioned, um, at a, maybe I don't think we did mention yet, at age 11, when you won the Tasty Talent competition and you beat Paul Blake, who became the lead singer of Bloodfire Posse, who I'll confess, I didn't actually know too much about him, but I'm gonna find out a bit more. And then unbelievably, because this guy, I, this man I do know, I actually uh, was in touch with him recently because he's coming <laughs> out here in November for Reggae on the Mountain. I'm going to be talking to him then. But King Yellow Man, mm -hmm. uh, at age 11, you beat 
uh, King Yellow Man in the table. I mean, I'm just, I shake my head because it's so unbelievable that you, you beat King Yellow Man. And my understanding is that as a prize for winning the competition when you were 11, that you were recorded, you were awarded a, a recording contract right. with, with Bob Marley's Tough Hung. Is that how that worked? Is yes, that, no, that's, that part of the history is right. And, Diane Jackson was there and uh, <clears throat> I think Sangha Davis was there from Tough Gun. Sangha yeah. was saying that he wanted to go with Paul Blake and Diane is like, we're going with a little girl wow. to get to, to, to record with us. And yeah. that it was just fate that night that my, my whole life started like that. Because, you know, at that point, I was just a country girl singing, singing in, you know, in my neck of the woods. Although people would remind me that I sang on Ring Ding, which was like this little kid's show, the first little kid's show. And that day, you know, people started seeing me from then. Wow. But like, Casey, yeah, people, hey, listen, people memory where I go. This, was the show, ring, this show was called Ring Ding? Ring Ding, yeah. And, and I had one of Jamaica's cultural icon on, on, on the radio or on tv on tv wow we had Miss Lou, our cultural icon it was every saturday i probably was a 10 year or a nine year old girl people remember and i went wow. on reading and i sang and people remind me it's like you always speak about tasty but you don't speak about ringing well i'm so happy because i certainly never right right but i forgot it too don't forget i'm gonna go I does this still exist on the internet? Can you find a clip of the ring ding? That is thing. Um, it, it, that's a whole nother story. All those taping of Miss Lou ring and embarrassing. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. well we, I, I'll have to look into that a little bit, Nadine. Maybe we'll talk about that at a, another time. But many sources on the internet um, indicate, and I think I mentioned to, may have mentioned right. to you this, that you were the very first artist. This is, shows up on the internet. I want to clarify it just to see if it's accurate. That it says that you were the first artist to be signed by Tough Gong. Is that okay, so I really want to clarify that. I've seen it a lot. Yeah. I wasn't even signed, per se, yeah. in terms of a contract with Bob. Secondly, when I went there, Judy Moore album, Black Woman, was done. There was a, a whole cadre of artists that Tough Gong was... I don't know if they were distributing. There was Israel Vibration. There was Juna Tucker. So I don't think I was like the first artist that, I don't know if I was the first artist that he recorded in terms of a Tough Gang production. Yeah. I have no idea. I was an 11-year-old kid. So I cannot yeah, substantiate that part of the history true. and say, yes, it was true or whatsoever. I was just a child and everything right. was happening to me. Yeah. Yes, I don't even know what was happening around me. So I know you asked me that. And I, that's why I said, you know, I'll answer everything as yeah. honestly as possible in terms of my knowledge. But just remember, I'm an 11 year old kid. Um, I know, know my father never mentioned anything being signed, but I know that I did have the recording experience. I did know my first recording experience that Bob was there. I know <laughs> that Diane Jobson advocated for me and everybody know who Diane Jobson is it's, was the attorney for bob marley at that a, time it's such a mm -hmm. small it's really a rather small point nadine i mean you were 11 years right, old right it's a small and, point and but you were you were you were signed to bob marley's label at 11. no one no one can dispute it and it was exactly and you, right. and you beat king yellow man so no one needs to it's just it's just it's just one of these things that comes up and you wonder when you see it well you're the first artist and then like you say there were probably other artists who were signed but one thing i do want to ask is that you said we're that, recording that i don't know if they were signed That's recorded a... who are recording um but probably he would have rec probably he would have signed you know like the i3s um or the tough gong would have had the i3s or rita marley would have been signed. i you know the i2 the funniest thing the first i3 album i think was after bob transition oh okay yeah. I remember labor. You are the melody, the melody. I love the way you walk because I'm a big I3 fan. But I, I think what I meant to say, album. you know, I think I meant to say them not not so much the I3, but the melody makers. Right, but, the melody makers were there. Children playing in the streets. You yeah. know, the other day I saw this poster of myself, melody makers, and Junior Tucker. Our first performance in 1980 when after starvation, and <laughs> they had children playing in the street, and we did our we did one at um, Disco Inferno, we did the other at, um, where did we do that? You mentioned Junior Tucker, Did't didn't he pass not? Uh... No, 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 Junior Tucker is here. He's a reverend, he's a pastor, he's okay. doing so well. Wow. He is, yeah. Okay. He's out of um, reggae, the American music industry, he's now a Christian. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 
Now, you know, uh, uh, one thing that I have sought to do, uh, Nadine, in my interviews is to probe people who've had actual, actual personal experiences with Bob um, to, you know, really rack their brain and to, you know, remember and recount them. However, um, while I do have a specific question or two for you about it, I really don't need to, to do that because there's the, the, you know, they have you ask you about a whole retelling of starvation. And the reason why is because I would point all the people who are interested in that topic, because it's a very interesting topic, um, specifically to the very detailed and revealing interview that you did with um, respected fellow reggae journalist, um, Angus Taylor for Reggaeville. Um, people, <laughs> people can go look, people can go yeah. look and, and there's a, you, you, you gave a very great interview. I hope people will also enjoy this interview, but you also, people should go back and read Angus's Taylor inter interview with you for Reggaeville. I think it was done in Jamaica at King's house. Yeah, Maybe. I think I was, I was, I was in braces. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I think so because I've seen the. Yeah, picture. I remember some little but, kids. Some little kids. Um, this girl. Yeah. Put our picture together, and she had in braids. It's like they're kind of making fun of me on my braces. <laughs> that's, so that's, so that's so wrong. That's so. That's so wrong. You you look beautiful in those pictures too. Um, in that interview with Angus Taylor, you really detailed at length your relationship and your your interactions with the Marley family as a young child, and you gave some precious details about how when you recorded what I think is one of the most incredible Roots tunes you could hear ever, Starvation. Um, and that you, you mentioned things about how Bob was there directing the musicians, how he, you know, he had to tell them to put you on a, on a high stool and just so you could reach the microphone. Um, and this, this is kind of why I think people should go back and look at that interview that you gave because you gave some really good details about that. Um, now both Starvation um, and your other giant tough gong hit in 1980, a song called A Young One Like Me. Yeah. I don't think enough is said about this song. Isn't um, it a beautiful it, song? Oh my God. Why I would hear it and cry, you know, the horns against, ah, oh my God, it's such an that lyrics song. Are, and the lyrics are so kind. Written by Sangha Davis, just like Salvation on the Land. True. And I, I the, the Sanji Davis, um, uh, those the lyrics that he wrote um, for both of those songs for um, for starvation and for a young one like me um, every every reggae fan has to has to listen to those songs yeah. and 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 they they because they are some of the most righteous conscious lyrics I've ever heard and your ability at such a young tender age to express those lyrics so poignantly that has to go down as one of the greatest things in reggae. And I don't care what anyone else has to say about it because it, it, it no, it's, it's the incredible that you were able to, you were able to give the emotion that was called for with such a maturity at age that, that age is so young. Um, and then of course it bears noting that, um, that one of the reasons why those tracks, you know, a young one like me and starvation, they sound so iry is that, the, the legendary Earl Brown, of course, at Tough yeah. Bomb, was involved, was the sound engineer. Um, and, you know, was, I did want to know, I wasn't sure, was a young one like me, was that recorded the same day as Starvation? No, man, no, that was recorded long after Starvation. So then, and was Bob in the studio for but a I young one like me? No, he was in the studio for Starvation. Remember that Bob was always touring, you know, and then yeah. after a while, I think a young one like me was, Bob just went missing. In my 11-year-old eye, 12-year-old eye, he went missing. But that's when he got sick. Yeah. You know, he was always around. Like, for a while, I would see him when he's off tour, you know, Boko Pat, Tough Gong. You know, I'm an 11-year-old kid. He's a 36-year-old man. Only if an adult, you know, like Diane would take me to see him. So I'm not in his age group. So I, would, I never had a lot of interactions with him, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was it, you know. Um, um, a young one like me... <clears throat> He wasn't around then. When, I think it was then in my young mind, Bob just went missing. Um, you know, when you, uh, I know you were, you were quite young, but um, when Bob, uh, well, you were older then, but when Bob passed, um, you know, uh, do you remember, you know, where you were when you find out, when you found out and how you found out? Well, I remember, I remember speaking to Bob 
through again Diane. Oh my God, that's why I love Diane Jobson so much, and I still love her. Um, I remember once I was at, at Tough Gong when, in my little head, he was just missing. So that's no, but that was Bob's lawyer, Diane Jobson. Yes, yes, that's she was right. living in Germany also. Yeah. Um, so like she got Bob, see not in here. I went to the, and, and the, he asked, "How are you doing?" But I didn't know that he was in Germany at that point, wow. speaking to her or you know what he was experiencing. That's the last time I spoke to him, and wow. he asked me how I was and all of that. And uh, the next thing I knew, again, people just missing. Dan just missing. You just don't know because you're a child. You know, yeah. adults don't come till I live near and say, you know, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. The next thing I knew was that. I heard he was sick. And then one day I was at St. Andrew High School for Girls and going home and on the radio, you hear that Bob passed. And I think the whole Jamaica there was just like, <laughs> went into mourning. I know Tough Gun went into mourning. I did one thing I remembered as a child, the feeling that I got was that when I stepped into Tough Gun after Bob transitioned, I felt like the whole place was in mourning. I felt yeah. like the walls were crying you it was like the light of 56 hope road was gone it's like a dog paul just fell over 56 hope a road. shadow a sh forget. A yeah sh shadow uh, yeah uh, well i'm hard. sorry i i didn't want to you know, i don't want it to i don't want to bring back the memory of the shadow yeah, but I, I, really I, sad, dark memories i um but you know, I also know that, you know, I, I think, it, you know, you were often called upon to do various tributes, you know, um, concerning Bob Marley and people know that you were, you know, very much his protege. And I appreciate it. I saw that you did an interview where you said, I'm sorry, you were going to, but I was going to. Protege. No, it's all right. It's, that's a long story with the protege. It's okay. I, but I won't correct. Well, I, 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 don't, I only said that word because I think I heard you say it once right um um it's a long story we finish it <laughs> well then we'll, next time when we will I'll, I'll bring that up next time maybe i'll right. remember to bring that one up but um um i want to I, and i, I want to thank you we've already been talking for quite a long time actually now that i notice um and i want to thank you again for being so generous i do have one more substantive question i hope that maybe it won't be too taboo and maybe maybe not too complicated that I want to ask you today, um, you can tell me if it is, and I'll respect your decision. And then maybe course, I can. Definitely. But 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 before I turn it over to you, and, and and I want to turn it over to you also after I ask my substantive question, I want to turn it over to you one last time to speak directly to all of your many fans around the world. Um, and I need to also point out at this juncture that, um, as I knew would be the case, um, there are so many hit tunes like. Uh, anything for you, baby face. We mentioned in my blood, but just cursorily, um, as well as many aspects of your career, Nadine, that I'm very, 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 very interested and want to ask you more questions about, like when you work doing work with Peter Tosh, um, when you work with Gussie Clark. And like I say, you're a fixture. You're one of the most respected. I hope, you know, I know that you, you get a lot of, you deal with a lot of adversity and a lot of chatty chatty. But I hope that you know, I hope you know that, that people like me exist and so many more people than me, millions of people around the world, Nadine, who, you know, believe that you're one of the greatest legends in this industry. Um, wow. So um, the, the, the last very serious question, though, I want to ask today, Nadine, and I know maybe you don't want to, maybe you'll need to think about it, but um because you know we connected of all places on social media actually right. through through twitter and twitter. the first the, the first time the first time was when robbie shakespeare tragically passed and the second time was when tabby diamond was tragically murdered mm -hmm. um and i'm bringing this up because um a recurring theme in many of my interviews has been has concerned the jamaican government's failure to properly invest in, promote, and honor reggae artists. And I, I'm talking about the failure to build and properly fund a grand reggae hall of fame in Kingston, perhaps on the waterfront. And then also I'm talking about the failure on the part of the government 
And now I have to be very honest, including maybe even, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe even Olivia Babsy Grange, who I know is a friend, even a Shiro of yours, but to officially re recognize some of these legendary reggae artists. And I mean, the names are too, they're too numerous to mention, but I would start with some of my friends like Scientist, Tony Chin, Winston Jarrett, Sister Carol, Nadine Sutherland, um, you know, and then of course I would have to even mention, because uh, I think I may have told you this, that that 85 year old Larry McDonald, he, this is the best hand drummer in the world and the coolest conga playing cat I told him today I've ever <laughs> I've ever seen. He just turned 85 last 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 weekend, a little week from from this Saturday from a week ago, and. So I'm going to go see him tonight, but, you know, he's going to be down there with the Scatolites in Los Angeles. But none of these legends, like I said, um, have been officially recognized and are honored by the Jamaican government at all for their con contributions to reggae music. Can you comment on your view of this situation? And also, do you have any suggestions for how we could change the situation? Well, first and foremost, I am very, very proud that, you know, what the music have done to really like, you know, like to evoke this passion in people who are not, who are non-Jamaicans. I'm proud that the power of reggae has done that. And it's from the roots of the people, True. from our pain and our struggle and how it just resonated across the world that someone like you would really feel so strongly about it that you would we have articulated with such passion. It makes me proud, you know, in terms of governments doing stuff, you probably, I think there's a point. Um, there's always, I think there's a problem that, you know, sometimes you have a good wife and the world see how beautiful she is, but because she's in your face every day, you don't see her beauty. Wow. So you always take for granted those who, who have done so much for <laughs> yeah. your culture. And it's something I think I've struggled with because I've, you know, like when you travel the world and see the passion that people have for reggae music and what they want to do. And, you know, I wish sometimes that people would feel that way, but a way about the music when, you know, when I come home, there, there's, there's definitely been a cultural shift as, even in my growth as a person i remember once that our own music was scorned upon by our own people because of slavery and the indoctrinization of colonization of not appreciating what you have and i've seen people now grow i've seen people from white jamaicans black jamaicans uptown downtown identifying strongly stronger with our own culture and feeling proud of it. So everything that you speak about, I don't know if I'll be here, but I know in terms of how people are coalescing and you still do have some negativity around that I pray that at one point that there will be something like this, like the museum that you could envision and, but also the because support to give to the music will be there from a corporate and a government level. So I don't know, but I thank you for that and I'm Nadine, so appreciative. Nadine, thank you so much because someday I do want to come when I next come, you know, or not when I next come, but because it's going to take them some time. So I'll give them some time, the time that they need to build that kind of a museum that I can come to as a tourist. And I want to be able to go down the Nadine Sutherland Hall and I want to be able to look up on the wall at the various records, hit records. And I want to be able to see a little plaques underneath to describe some of this history that we talked about today. And I want little children in Jamaica to be able, and all from all over the world who visit, to be able mm -hmm. to do that someday. And um, it's been such a blessing to talk to you, Nadine. I want you to please, please stay safe. Keep, please don't listen to the negativity out there. Please keep making music. Please stay in touch with me because I want to talk to you more about some of these subjects we, we didn't reach today. Um, before we hang up for today, though, um, and until next time, can you please let all the reggae fans know about any new musical projects They everyone go will, will immediately go and check out Queen, I know, and go Google that up. Um, but can you let them know 
I know you've already been involved in some projects. You were on a cruise earlier this year. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like, wow, I hope she doesn't catch anything on the cruise, you know. I know, right? Know? I know, but they were very, <laughs> I must say they were meticulous. I think Good. everybody who came on, you were, you had to be checked for nice. COVID before you go on. Yeah. Um, I think they really, 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 really went, did the extra step to ensure the safety. Yeah. Although, yeah, I still felt a little ways, you know. Yeah, I, well, you know, but because. But, but we're in a, a Jamaica said COVID still a keep. We're we're in a time, we're in a weird time, I think, in the world where you know we all I'm going downtown to like a, even my wife pointed out, right? I'm going downtown to uh to the strip today to see yeah. Larry, you know, and I don't think there are gonna be too many people masked up, you know, at all, etc. But you know, we all have to, you know, kind of make various decisions as we and, and judge things as we go. Um, but or do you have any other uh do you is there anything that you want to let the people know about concerts tours uh there will that you're people working? are contacting me for shows yeah um that i know i don't nothing is really being concretized um there will definitely be more music um yeah there, there has to be yeah it have to be there's so much music in me there's so much music to be done that. and yeah you can Contact me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I try to be as transparent as possible with my friends and with the people who love me. There's, you know, I, I try to write back. And if you face it to me, I try to clap back. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's so, it's so appreciated. And it's, and actually it's, um, it's refreshing, Nadine, to see somebody who is so real and keeps it real and, um, and uh, it's such a blessing to know you. Um, please let's stay in touch um, and I'll get in touch with you soon, you know, just about various details of things. Um, but please take care of yourself and thank you so much. I definitely for the time. will. And thank you. Thank you. I mean, we organized this for, for so long and I'm glad we were able to do it. And thank you for your interest and just thank you for your passion. Thank you, Nadine. Bless up and you have a great day and we'll big talk up, soon. Yeah, man. Big up, big up, big up. Thank you. Bye, no bye, Nadine. Bye, bye. bye. bye.